Are you nervous? Yeah, yeah, I am nervous actually. It's the the biggest game of the season for us. Have you looked at them on the One Football app? Yes, I have looked at them on the One Football app, the sponsors of today's video, because One Football is the best football app out there to keep up to date with every team from around the world. And I was keeping up with Seville on there, and I can see that El Nesri has got you know, the most amount of goals for them this season, 17. I'm nervous about that. They're obviously top four in La Liga. Look, the app's telling me everything, and it's not really making me feel any better heading into today's game. So I really hope we can do well, but I'm not too sure. Where can you download the app? Yeah, obviously you can download it from the top line of the description for absolutely free. And it does massively help me and my channel out if you do so. So thank you for reminding people that, Gina, because uh, that's quite important. Hopefully it all goes well. and Hopefully I'll see you in the quarterfinals. All right, Gina, have a good one. Hello and welcome back to On The Rocks. Hope you're all doing well today and looking forward to today's episode as we're taking on Seville in what is the biggest game of the season, biggest game of the season, biggest game of the series for us, let alone the season, the entire series. It's the Europa Conference League second knockout round, the furthest we've ever got in any Euro competition. So even if we lose, it's fine because it's the furthest we've ever gotten in this competition or any competition. So it's a big milestone for us, but obviously now we're here, we want to do as much as we can to get through it. Because of the World Cup in Qatar this past winter, this is a one-legged affair. No two legs about it, one-legged affair. So it's do or die in this away game to Seville, which is rather unfortunate. Following that, we do have some games against Motherwell in the Scottish Premiership. Since you were last here, we've only played the one game, and that was against Livingston, and we won 1-0 with PK scoring the only goal of the game. We rotated the team massively for this one because I wanted to make sure everyone had as much rest as possible for the Seville game because basically the only way we're going to beat Seville is by being fitter than them, I think. So hopefully giving players lots of rest has helped us out. Luckily for us, we have had a whole week to prepare for this severe game following the win against Livingston, which is quite nice considering that most of the games since January has started have been Wednesday, Saturday, Wednesday, Saturday. The league table hasn't changed that much because we've only played the one league game in between episodes. We stay third on 53 points. However, we now have three games in hand on Rangers and two games in hand on Celtic. So if we win both our games in hand, we'll still be four points behind Celtic. In fact, five points behind Celtic which isn't ideal for us. And then Rangers, if we win all our games in hand on them, we will be level on points to them on 62. The thing is though, they have the points in the bag already. We've got to hypothetically win those points later down the line. So it's going to be tricky. Also, if we do manage to stay in this competition, it's going to just help Rangers out massively because they're not in any European competition. They can just focus on the league, whereas we're fighting on two fronts. Either way, enough talking. Let's get down to business. You might be able to argue that we have the toughest draw in the entire round because Sevilla are probably the best team there. You might say Chelsea are better. You might say Besiktas and Lille are right up there as well. But for me, I don't think it gets much more difficult than Sevilla. Despite that, we are going to play our usual style of football, because why not? We seem to beat Celtic and Rangers like this, and we had a good go in the group stage of the Europa League playing this for the most part. So for me, let's not go defensive. It's a one-legged affair. Let's go gung-ho, all out attack, see what we can do. Mizunu starts in goal with Davies, Kurt, Suter and Laird in the back. Campbell and Devine through the middle with Gordon, Knight, Shankland and Nesbitt in the attacking quadruplets. And so as kickoff is upon us here today in the south of Spain, Seville get the first highlight of the game. The corner goes all the way through to Devine though. He can clear it out from the back up towards Shankland. Shankland coming forward. Come on, let's get a nice early goal here. Oh, not a penalty. No penalty there for us. That's a bit frustrating, obviously, as El Nesri gets the ball out to Parat, gets it out wide into back to El Nesri. El Nesri shoots. El Nesri scores. It's not good. You hate to see it. Not a great start. Okay, that's not so good. Annoyingly, what I've realised is at the start of today's episode, looking at the real life fixtures and results, El Nesri's got 17 goals in the league this season. I've just seen that was the 16th of this season in game. You can guarantee now he's going to get 17. 
another goal is going to come for him at some point, isn't it? You can guarantee it now that I've said 17 at some point in today's video. We've got a corner though. Ben Knight puts it in the middle. It's cleared, but only as far as Shankland, who can bring the ball back into the area with a cross into Campbell. Back to Campbell. Campbell in the middle. Gordon's there, just not quite getting his noggin on the ball. But he does oh, get on the ends of a pass from Ben Knight, putting it just wide of the post. The frustrating thing about this is right now, Look at the match stats. Two shots to Seville, four to us, and yet we just can't get it in the back of the net. But it's very promising that we are having four shots and more shots than Seville, which is interesting. Another chance for us as Knight puts another corner in. It's a bit of a rubbish corner, though, unfortunately. Divine picks up the loose ball, though, and he looks to bring it forward into Campbell. Campbell back to Kerr. Kerr forward to no one. That's a terrible ball forward. But can we win possession back through Kerr again? No. El Nesri nods it down and Oliver starts to come forward. Oliver shoots. Not quite suited with a good challenge. Good defensive display from us. Not quite so good because that's a terrible clearance. But Seville still coming forward. Zinchenko shoots. Zinchenko can't score. And Nesbitt, can he find? Oh, not quite finding Shanklin. But Ethan Laird is tackled by Zinchenko. El Nesri's through again. And that's his 17th of the seat. I told you it was going to happen. Although, VAR. Fingers crossed. We need this disallowed. Okay, that's a lifeline. Half time then, 1 0 down. Uh, thrashed my arms. I'm far from police from what I've just seen from this team. Nisbet and Shanklin having poor games. One of them is going to be pulled off the pitch in a minute, I think. But. Annoyingly, we still are ahead in shots and stuff like that, as Bazzuni makes a great save on the line there. That's really good from him. It's frustrating because this is like the one game we needed to perform in, our strikers we needed to perform, and they're just not doing it. So Shanklin and Nesbitt will swap over. Nesbitt's going to come off for PK, I think. And then who's this? Uh, ben Knight's not playing well. That's sad, isn't it? Uh, Leif Davis having a poor game. As is Laird. Let's get Laird off for Roland Hernandez. And I want to bring Lewis Ferguson on through the middle for Divine. 30 minutes or so to go in this game. Let's shout. Oh, I didn't mean to praise. I meant to shout demand more. That was poor from me. Uh, we're going to go a bit more attacking with our play as well. As on the edge. I mean, that's a very good goal. Oh, it's so frustrating because we're right there. We're right there. We just can't seem to get the finishing touch on it. Whereas Seville are making the most of their chances right. We just can't seem to do it with ours. And that's a superb goal. You can't you can't deny that. Highlight straight from kickoff though as Gordon gets the ball into Scott Kerr. Not Scott Kerr, Jason Kerr. I'm doing it again for former Link City players. Jason Kerr. I'm you're gonna get used to Scott Kerr, I'm sorry, but you know, I'm going to say it all the time. Ben Knight looks to come forward, though. Can he get across into the middle to pull a goal back for us? Hernandez does. Shanklin's there. Shanklin gets his 10th of the season. And with 25 minutes or so to go, another lifeline has been given to us. Come on, boys. Demand more. We can do it. We can do it. I know we can. We've had so many shots today. Seville have taken the second half by the scruff of the neck and done pretty well in the second half. But it's not that we're down and out of it. We are doing so, so well, and with 10 minutes to go, just put everyone we can onto an attacking duty, I think, at this stage. Uh, where's the advanced playmaker? Attack. Uh, wing back, attack. Wing back, attack. Everything we can to try and score now. Very attacking mentality. Let's shout demand more once again. Oh, we're just going to miss out, I think. Five minutes of added time. Is anything going to change? Oh, we've given it our all. And that is, I'll be honest, I thought we'd get battered. I thought we'd get battered. It's more upsetting that we're that close. We were that close to doing it. But I feel like that's been our sort of story in European football this season. We were that close to getting into the Europa League knockout stages and then we fell apart, didn't we? We were that close to getting to the quarterfinals of the Europa Conference League, but we fall up. Ah, oh, you hate to see it. But at the same time, it's been our best season yet in Europe. I'm really pleased with how we've played and performed, so we can't have too many complaints. And actually, we were the final Scottish team left because, of course, um, Betis knocked out Celtic in the first knockout round of the Europa League and then final just beating Betis in the second qualifying or second knockout round of the Europa League. So basically, we were flying the flag for Scotland until the end. So we lasted the longest out of all of the Scottish teams, which is also something to be quite proud of. So in terms of our European coefficient, I think it's going to finish on 40.6. I'm not sure if it updates itself like any further than this, but 
What that does suggest is that we're going to overtake Russia into eighth. And by the looks of things, no one behind us is going to overtake us either, which is really good. So we've made progress and that's the main thing. In the meantime, we've got a game against Motherwell coming up and actually then two against Hibs in a row. That's, look at that, one day off in between, that's frustrating, but we're only gonna do the Motherwell game in today's episode. And look after that as well, we've got, hang on, Hibs, rest, Hibs, rest, Celtic. I mean, what a week of football this is. Four games in seven days. The team, though, is actually looking pretty fresh after the Seville game, so I think we will leave it the exact same as it was. We might bring Ferguson on for Divine instead, just to give him a run out there and just get a bit of rotation in there, but that's the only thing I want to change. So let's also bring PK on for Shankland. I want to see how he does. Let's give it a go. So as kickoff is upon us, I guess one positive of losing to Seville there is that if we want to be winning the Scottish Premiership this season, then we need to just focus on that. And being knocked out of Europe allows us to focus on it. So it might be a bit of a silver lining. There's still a chance for us to win the league title this season, although I don't think we're gonna quite do it because Celtic will probably end up doing very well at the end of the season. As Ethan Laird, what a mazy run that was. He ran past like the whole Motherwell team to score that. Let's watch it on the replay. That's one of the goals of the season, I reckon. I've just realized the camera's frozen. How's that happen? Just randomly freeze it every now and again, right? Well, I'll sort this out in a second. I'm too busy watching Ethan Laird be like prime Messi. Another chance for us to come forward in the 22nd minute of the game here. Ben Knight looking to find Gordon, and he does find Gordon, who finds Davis. Davis to put this into Ferguson, back to Campbell. Lovely passing right now, but we can't get it forward into the area. That's where we need to get the ball. But Ethan Laird does get it into the area. Nesbitt scores. I think he's off. He's not offside. You love to see it. I'm pretty sure he was offside. Let's watch this one back again because there's big calls of offside here. Maybe Laird is playing him on side, but I thought Laird was behind. Let's watch the, let's get the actual highlight lines up, please. The highlight lines, the offside lines up, please. I'd like to see this game. It's not going to show us. Okay. Well, obviously it wasn't offside, but it just, it just wanted to see how close it was. That was all. Well, that's not great either. Um, wasn't expecting that to happen, so just wasn't really talking. I was trying to think about how I could maybe edit the lines on, but I'm not gonna edit the lines on now because I'm miffed by that. Okay, so an eventful first 30 minutes of the game. It's 2-1 to us, which obviously is good, but we do not want Motherwell to score any more goals, and hopefully we score plenty of more ourselves. Nisbet on the ball right now, gets it into Davies. Davies to Campbell, to Ferguson. Ferguson with a huge ball over to Knight. It reaches Knight, and Knight can now put it back to Ferguson. Ferguson to Campbell. Campbell shoots, hits the crossbar. Nesbitt fouled. No penalty? How is that not a penalty? I can't believe it. There is another highlight, though, which we have one possession of with Davies on the ball. Coming down the left-hand side, gets it to Campbell, gets it to Ferguson. Ferguson gets it to Campbell into Nesbitt. Nesbitt to PK to Gordon. What beautiful passing that was. PK instrumental there you can see he come from Barcelona because that was beautiful stuff from him 3-1 back in control see where was this level of striking performance when we played against Seville you know why could we not do it against them we had enough chances to do it we just couldn't get a shot in the back of the net particularly which is rather frustrating but you know we won't complain too much because it was still a good season in Europe for us and next season hopefully we'll do even better that's not good though 3-2. So early in the second half, Leif Davies gets the ball forward to go Oh, I thought he'd scored. I was about to start celebrating. I can't believe he's missed that. Gordon, although he has scored a goal in today's game, he just is a shadow of what he was last season. And uh, I don't think we'll be getting him back next season. It's not really been his fault so much. He has been injured for a lot of this season, but I guess it is his fault for getting injured all the time as well. It's just, it's just not quite ideal. We need someone who's going to be consistently not injured, essentially, uh, for us to do well and progress. It'd be nice to have our own player and not have Gordon miss headers like that. He could have had a hat-trick today, should have had a hat-trick today. Still, we keep trying and trying and trying in this second half. There's, what, 33 minutes left on the clock in today's game, so plenty of time for something to happen, and there's only one goal in it, so we do need to make sure we see the game out by scoring a couple more goals to make sure we're nice and secure. And Gordon, looking to come forward, finds Nisbet, and Nisbet, phew, that's a banger. Yesterday, he missed several easy one-on-one -on -one opportunities, but today, 
He can just do that. It blows my mind as that what he does sometimes. But, uh, you know, he's got 26 goals to his name now this season. So he can't complain too much about it, can we? Because that's an awful lot of goals to score. I mean, ideally, a Premier League club, like, I don't know, a Crystal Palace will see him scoring. They won't see Bazunu conceding plenty of goals and think, let's sign Bazunu, which is actually quite good. We want to sign Bazunu, so Man City, please tell him to us. But... Ideally, like a Crystal Palace will see Nisbet scoring, you know, 30 goals hopefully this season by the end of it at least. And will think, right, we can spend £30 million on him or something like that. 20 minutes to go and Ben Knight's picked up a knock and is not playing particularly well today. So we'll bring him off for McLennan. We'll also take Gordon off for Ethan Ross. And let's give Tyson Brown a run up front uh, instead of PK. 10 minutes to go and I'm not feeling confident given how leaky our defence has been in today's game. We need another goal for me to feel a little bit more secure. And hopefully Ethan Ross will do that as he gets the ball into the middle. And it's somehow turned in the back of the net by Nisbet who's got a hat-trick today now, I think. Ethan Ross does really well here to uh, make sure he gets that cross into the middle, into the feet of Nisbet there. He just gets it in there, and it's sort of like a... Ah, the defender slide tackles it into Nisbet, who's trying to slide tackle the ball himself in the first place. So he's very lucky to score it, but we're not going to complain. Another highlight, though, blimey, there's been quite a lot in this game against Motherwell in the eight-goal thriller that it has been. Uh, McLennan now on the ball. Can he shoot? No, he passes it to Tyson Brown, who puts it wide. Tyson, if only you could just get your shots on target, that would have been a certain goal for you. In the meantime, I've just seen, I think it's Hamilton. I've just gone 2-2 with Celtic. So Celtic dropping points today by looks of things. Um, they are 3-3 three -three with Hamilton right now. Oh, they were losing. Hamilton got a third goal in the 96th minute, and in the 97th minute, it said that, uh, whatever they're called, Celtic got a goal back. Either way, though, that is still good for us because that is Celtic dropping two points to us, which is great. Uh, Rangers won 3-0, so the point difference between us stays the same. But they whoa, are now on level terms. So when we go on to win our three games in hand, we will be on 65 points as well as it stands. Because 9 plus 56 is 65. And if Celtic slip up in a game... I think one of our games in hand is against Celtic. So, oh, if we win that game against Celtic, it's going to be a very tight end to the season. Ah, I think I'm lying to you because we play Celtic on the Saturday, which suggests that everyone else is playing on that day. So that's not our game in hand. Celtic is not a game in hand for us which actually might be a good thing. But I think next episode, uh, we will come back for the championship round of the league. We're going to play the rest of these league games off camera, and then we'll come back for those final like five or six games of the season and see what we need to do to win the league title. So tomorrow's episode might be the last one of this season. Either way, thank you ever so much for watching today's episode. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. And of course, if you have done, make sure you do drop a like on the video for me. Subscribe to the channel if you're new around here and leave a comment down below for the YouTube algorithm. I'll see you next time. Have a good one. Goodbye.